Okay, so the first trip I uh, made it to Flying J in Fort Erie, US is that way. And this is the first time I'm traveling. Well, I had my tablet set up before, but now you see that monstrous cable over there? It's hooked up in here. And actually it was, it was uh, pretty easy. Uh, as soon as I hooked it up, it just showed me, um, sorry, there's a uh, very bright in here, but I'll just show you. You see, um, I don't have to do anything. As soon as I start driving now, like when I stopped, I just clicked on driving and I changed the status to off. And now I see I'm off, right? And as soon as I start driving, like I think after, after like five miles per hour, it'll just switch to driving. All, all you got to remember is um, turn it off, you know, because if you don't turn it off, let's say I went for lunch, uh, it would put me uh, like from driving, it switches, it cannot switch by itself to off duty, it only switches to on duty. And so now there's uh, almost, yeah, one hour that I spent in there, uh, it shows as off duty. So as I start driving, you know, perfect. And I'm heading to Pittsburgh, just southeast of Pittsburgh. And, you know, uh, I have no problem with driving, but because I drove my Mustang all this time, you know, like I, I forget these skills pretty fast, you know. I remember when I didn't have a car, uh, you know, I, would, uh, I was a company driver. I would park the truck at Challenger and then go to a hotel, you know, for a week. And then I come back and it was difficult to drive. But, of course, back then I, I only was... I only had like two years of experience, you know, so now I it, I guess I'm remembering the skills better, but still with me, you know, each person is different, but I really need to drive something, you know, otherwise it'll be very difficult. So because I drove the Ford, I have no issues, like I feel super comfortable driving, but all this paperwork, you know, that's what kind of like stressed me out, like it took, you know, two days to... to um, do permits and you know all this stuff uh, well I did permits on Saturday and then today they started calling me they started ordering permits uh, there was some back and forth because one of the roads um, right leading to the like a small SR like you know uh, county road leading to the consignee turns out it has a restriction and when the guy tried to order a permit he got back a message saying that he needs the bond number so evidently this place in there it's, it's basically an auction they have a special permit that they're supposed to give to um, to carriers and what they do is she takes my company name like which is my name and then she sends it by email or like there's a special form she sends it to the DOT in Pennsylvania and she gave me the number like the bond number it's like a six or seven digit like a permit number and I gave it to um, to my permit company and the lady said don't uh, wait like 10 minutes give me because they should receive this before you apply for the permit you know and then everything was done so all i need is basically I, i'm traveling under my annual permit in ontario but i just need a permit for um new york and pennsylvania and uh, normally i would need a permit for the bridge to cross into us but there's a bridge authority but because i'm under 117,000 pounds i'm under 12 feet i think that's what they require basically they don't care about me it's only and i'm gonna so the permits are about uh um 280 bucks canadian which is i don't know 200 dollars us not too bad so actually yeah, i think i saved some money um with this load because it's forty thousand instead of uh, instead of 60 you know with that dozer uh i would need a a permit for the bridge for sure and that can be another 100 bucks you know sometimes uh, i don't know like they have a weird system sometimes they charge you sometimes they don't but anyway all my paperwork is here and most importantly i i double checked my uh, customs uh, status like how was my i did it before uh i left cambridge because this is 100 miles from cambridge to the border here it's 100 miles and so i did all the thing you know on the computer and i emailed the broker with my sticker and um, now when i went inside i checked and uh, went back to the you know border website border processing and it's i see all like green bars you know like five green bars basically everything accepted is accepted all documents are on file 
and the one that's most often is uh, the culprit when they s you stop at the border is the c customs broker paperwork you know like first it says uh, carry a paperwork on file and but you also like I do my part but then also the customs broker must do their part and their filing must uh, match with my filing because it's all that sticker number right he I, I use that sticker when I do my, my part and, and so that sticker, that code for the border is, is that's what connects the broker filing, you know, that's how the customs website knows that it's the same shipment. And so I checked and finally it says customs broker paperwork on file. And basically they're awaiting arrival of the goods, you know. Yeah, this was actually easy. Uh, you know, I still remember how to do it. The last time I did this is like three months ago, but it's very easy. The website gives you tips. You know, if you miss something, there'll be like a exclamation mark in there. Basically, pay attention, you know, uh, like you got to take care of that. And so when I was driving, this is pretty much the first, no, second time as I'm driving with a load. The first one was uh, uh, from, you know, from the shipper back to my yard. And now I'm driving and I'm looking at that, those green dots, you know, fuel economy. And first I start driving like 57 miles per hour. And I look at my fuel economy, it's like 47 liters. And then I, um, 47 liters per hundred kilometers, that's five miles per gallon US. And then I started climbing some big hills in here near St. Catharines. I see it goes 48, 49, 50. Like what the heck, you know, why is it so much? So 50 liters per hundred kilometers, that's, that's like 4.7, 4.8 miles per gallon. And I'm only 93,000 pounds. Uh, so I wonder what, what would have happened if I had like, a, you know, that 60,000 pound uh, crawler loader. So basically I sent a message to a sales guy. I said, any idea on the break-in period? Like if it keeps giving me this less than five miles per gallon, you know, I'll go broke, you know. <laughs> of course, I like the power. But that's why, basically, I ended up driving uh, after I climbed this big hill out of Niagara Falls. It was like, I don't know, three miles long hill. And that's where I saw my, it says 51 liters per hundred kilometers. I'm like, Jesus. And so I started driving like 90 kilometers an hour, 56 miles per hour. I just keep my RPM needle right at the lowest green, green dot, because there's only two dots. Like on a Volvo, they have like a little band green band and on, on this truck you only have like two green dots and they're very narrow so pretty much they want you to stay around 1300 rpm and uh, so yeah so so far fuel economy is uh, very low you know uh, but because it's a big engine it's a big engine and then i look at the boost over here and i yet have to see the needle going over 30 you know like very low boost for some reason and that's why I started tightening all the clamps and by the way I this morning before I left I drove in my car to the Kenworth dealer gave him my VIN number and he says yeah it's a standard clamp so I bought uh, four clamps like two regular ones like what I have now and then there's also there's uh, those are like eight bucks Canadian like five dollars US and then I bought um, like heavy duty those are 13 dollars canadian they have a much bigger spring but uh i don't remember did they put them on no i didn't even put them on i only used the regular ones so i just added two more uh in the beginning of this air thing you know or air hose next to the turbo i added one more so now there's like two of them in there and i added another one on the on the where it leaves the the charge air cooler and I asked them about this and the guy says, yeah, they should not be too tight. I said, how much pressure? He says, uh, 35 like pounds, you know, 35 pounds per foot or whatever. So I, I opened the hood and I made sure that they're not too tight. So I released them a little bit. And he says, yeah, so basically uh, why, why it needs that play in there is when the engine gets hot. You know, it's not the pressure, it's the temperature of the engine. It's like when your engine is cold, so basically... If you want to do this, never tighten them on a cold engine. You know, like when the engine is hot, let's say when you stop after driving, that's when you can open the hood and check if any of them are, you know, too loose. And so now when I stopped here again at, um, at uh, Flying J here, I opened, uh, I opened the hood and I checked that they're all not too loose, not too tight, you know. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so Ace Manifest is good. My border is good. I did my bill of lading. 
I talked to the factoring company. They're waiting for my uh, for my paperwork. All approved. Uh, that you know, all approved, and so they're gonna pay me within like 24 hours after I deliver the load. So all I need now is there's one trick here is that I have to go across uh, Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh has a curfew from four to seven, four to seven. And 25 miles above the border where you cannot go uh, during this time is that uh, Portersville Flying J, Portersville uh, pilot. And the sunset is at 740, you know? So basically I'm trying to, and I look at that, that area, like restricted area through Pittsburgh, it's pretty much like 25 miles. So I figured if I start driving at seven, like if I leave the truck stop, the pilot at 6.30, then I'll be at the northern border of the restricted area at seven. So I'm all legal because after seven you can drive. And then I will have 40 minutes to cross Pittsburgh before sunset, you know? So, and that's what I've been doing at the, uh, at the restaurant, trying to figure out if I can do it because uh, I need to deliver this load as, uh, you know, first thing in the morning. Otherwise, uh, my factoring company, um, it'll take another day because I have to send them all the paperwork before midday, uh, you know, the, for the transfer. So I really need that money, you know, my first money. So anyway, so let's get going. Let's get going. I'm five miles away from U.S. border. Everything is set. All I need is just find my passport. And then the next stop will be... Actually, wait a second. It's already 4.30. <laughs> how did I, how do I plan on reaching uh, Portersville? I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep going. But basically, I can drive to, till 7.40, but I cannot drive, like I said, I cannot drive between 4 and 7 uh, south of um, junction with I-76 and I-79, north of Pittsburgh. That's where the restriction starts, you know? Starts at four, ends at seven. So basically, I gotta stop talking and start driving. Driving on uh, I ninety in New York. The weather's good. The track's pulling okay. The fuel mileage is awful. It's almost seven o'clock, so sunset is about half an hour, and I cannot believe this. I only made it to uh, Harbor Creek, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Somehow I was, I was gonna go to uh, cross the across Pittsburgh line. Never happened. Uh, some guys over here. I uh, see. That's the spreader bar, right? That's what, like closer guy to me they have these leap her leap her big uh, like uh, crawler type of machines and so the guy has single axle but you see it's it's far away from the trailer and the other guy actually has just four axles like mine with a flip but if you have this um, spreader bar so I can hold lots of weight uh, in Western US whereas this setup with the flip axle uh, works fine works fine uh, east of Mississippi anyway so uh, first impressions 
Um, of course, the truck has to break in. I only have, uh, when I cross the Pennsylvania line, I wrote down my mileage in kilometers, 1799. So that's all this truck did. Uh, that's like just over a thousand miles. You know? But it loses power pretty fast. Like, you know, there was a couple of big hills. Like, I don't know. loses power you have to shift because I see my speed you know and I shifted like 1200 1100 rpm but you know new truck it's always it has to break in but like I said if I uh, if I don't see improvement in the next couple of weeks I'm gonna stop by uh, by uh, dealer and let them check it out because there might be some leaks sometimes you know like maybe I got like defective charger cooler maybe there's a leak there because uh, I pushed the throttle in the floor at one point where I had to downshift to 8 low because the truck just wouldn't pull you know like I have 40,000 pounds on the deck the truck doesn't want to pull in the top gear and I so I downshifted to 8 low or gear 17 and I was just watching my you know my boost over here right just and I pushed the throttle in the floor and I was waiting for this uh, thing to show me like at least I don't know 35 40 psi and it never did it just stayed at like 29 you know 28 29 not even hitting 30 uh, and again the throttle was all the way into the floor you know so I don't know I guess uh, you know all these modern trucks that try to save fuel uh you know they don't give you a full power and also the way the way they they reduce power based on like i know even on the mac right it was the same thing and on on even on the international if you are especially when you're empty it's like the truck feels kind of like powerless you know and then when you have a heavy load the computer opens everything and you know you can feel the power so we'll see what happens but that's the engine part but the truck itself you know is very comfortable uh, i'm still you know i'm very impressed with the visibility how quiet it is inside you know super comfortable like no comparison to uh, to the max so so we'll do these uh first impressions uh maybe after a month you know like after when i after i have this truck for a month like real driving because like I said, for now it's just over a thousand miles, but um, 1700 something kilometers, right? But once I have it, let's say for a month, we'll do kind of like a review, you know, and see what's going on. And I'll give you guys my, uh, my uh, feedback. And so, yeah, so I, I hope to cross Pittsburgh line. And I didn't, I think from here it's like three hours driving to my place near Pittsburgh where I'm delivering this uh, wheel loader so just already too late you know I, I started late today you know first trip like I said it's always uh, you know you start remembering stuff and uh, takes a long time you know get back in the you know in the working mindset anyway and just the guy next to me is a, is a Mac <laughs> They just, this guy dropped the trail over here, the guy over there dropped the trail over there, and they just swapped. Probably this guy didn't do something, you know, so they punished him. They said, no, you cannot have that trailer. You gotta have, you gotta hook up to this trailer. And the truck stop, you see, it's almost pretty much full. Like, there's not that many spots left, you know. So I had, I had to go all the way here to the corner near the truck wash. Well, actually, no, there's still lots of space. It's just these oversized guys, they, you know, each of these trucks, they occupy like two spots. Like, I look in the mirror at myself, I'm like, you know, that blade on the driver's side, like the where I'm looking at, just sticks out a little bit. Actually, the way the guy loaded, it sticks out on the left and it pretty much on the right, if you look in the mirror, there's nothing. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, one more thing I'm going to show you, one, 
the last truck there's a guy driving by classic Virginia now we're gonna finish the movie like this with brand new cars going into the distance what is this uh, Merce oh BMW probably that's like a couple million bucks over there the guy has on his trailer I don't know how they sleep at night you know anyway and fuel I don't know if you can see it but fuel is uh, let's see no sorry fuel is a uh, 369 US per gallon over here 269 267 for for gas 369 for diesel way too expensive okay so the first trip uh, so so far so good right I'm making progress making money just I, I was hoping to deliver you know first thing in the morning but uh, now it'll be more like lunchtime so for now I just gotta do uh, what I gotta do I printed out all my stuff that I need to to print out I just probably uh, go have some quick supper and then I got to research on my computer because there's a couple of local roads I have to go on in the very end right before I hit the Kansai Ni and you know some of these roads I got to double check that I go the right way so basically that's the the plan I got to do my homework and study now here's a kind of like a heavy haul cat 308e that the guy has on the step deck all steel all steel step deck wood floor and even the truck has steel wheels very cheap setup anyway all right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll show you some driving tomorrow because of my uh, GoPro, I, I forgot to charge my battery. So I'll show you driving, and specifically, I want to show you how the truck climbs uh, hills because I-79, there's going to be up and down. Like, not too bad, but then closer to Pittsburgh, it's like some pretty big hills. So you'll see how I shift uh, how the 605 horsepower engine supposedly how it handles uh, hilly terrain so stay tuned uh, to be continued